Hi, welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Atia of Atia's Treasure. I just filmed a pattern haul video, so please go check that video out. And right now, I'm going to be filming a notion haul video. Um, I have a business, Atia's Treasure, and I do a lot of different items in that business, and I'm adding new items all the time. I'm going to be going back on Etsy. I was on Etsy well, years and years and years ago. Um, less than 10 years but I really didn't put a lot into it I used to do a lot of craft shows um, for like church and different things so and word of mouth and friends so I kind of ran my business that way but now I do want to be on an actual platform where more people can really see me so I plan on reopening my Etsy shop so I'm working on doing that right now so I will be having tutus kids shirts crochet items a lot of different items um, as I add new things, I may do videos to show my progress, what I'm working on. Right now, I'm working on embroidery samples um, for the shirts to put on, a couple back to school. I know I'm a little late for it, but back to school, um, Thanksgiving, Christmas, that's kind of going to be my focus. Um, birthdays, always, um, anything comes up. I'm sorry about the light. I'm trying to use the daylight. And it keeps going in and out. So I'm sorry if it looks blurry. Um, I'm not the IT person in the family. My husband is. He can help me with the lighting and how to do better quality videos right now. I just want to get them out. Because I'm always getting asked to do a video or show my face. And I usually like to just show my hands. Um, so I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone and do these YouTube videos for you guys. Um, I love to teach. Um, I work at a sewing machine. I work for a sewing machine company. Um not sure if I can mention it right now, but <laughs> I do work for a sewing machine company. I sell sewing machines. Um, I am a mother. I'm a wife. I've been married to my wonderful husband, David, of 20 years. I have two sons, um, David Jr. He is 18. I have Christian. He is 15. So I'm the only girl. So I'm still the princess of the family. Um, so, you know, I just, I love to create. I love to teach. Um, I love everything crafty as you can see behind me from fabric to jewelry embroidery just about everything so um, like I say I have these notions that I've purchased you know for my business um, I want to just take things to the next level some things I just needed um, so I'm gonna get right into it so the first thing I have which you always need scissors I am a lefty I used to work for Joanne Fabrics, and the one thing that really peeved me about working there is they did not consider the left-handed people at Joanne's. Um, so we used to have like this one pair of scissors that we would like literally fight over me and another person that was left-handed. Um, I've trained myself to cut with a rotary cutter and scissors with my left and my right hand, um, but just it's easier. And the, even the left-handed scissors that are out there. Just putting your hand on them, it, just, it feels awkward. So I purchased some of these uh, spring action type scissors because these are the ones that I used to use when I worked at Joanne's. And it's just less fatigue on your hand. I do get carpal tunnel in my hand sometimes. So this actually helps a lot with the spring instead of sticking your hand through the loop. Um, so yeah, these are work on better products for lefties. You know, there are a lot of us out there. We need left-handed products. <laughs> so also, um, I purchased a... I guess like a exacto kind of knife. I see um I watch Saya Swag bags um on YouTube. She makes a lot of bags and when she cuts the overlays for the handbags, she uses is like a little let me see if I can there we go. It's like an exacto knife. Um I think she may have a set, but I purchased this. I do have another I have a real exacto knife knife set. I just don't know where I did with it. Um I just buy things because I see other people have <laughs> Also, I crochet earrings. Um, I could do a whole video on how to crochet earrings. That was like my most popular thing when I first really started crafting was the crochet earrings. If you ask anybody, they were so popular. I would walk in the store or I used to work for Walmart and they literally would like ask if they buy them out of my ears, literally. And I used to always carry an extra pair of spare earrings with me just in case that ever happened. And it would happen a lot. So I use um, like nylon thread. So this one, um, 
it's a nylon thread. I don't know if you can see the rainbow color in it. Um, but these make really, really good crochet earrings because there's a lot of colors in them. Perfect for the summertime. I like that boho, boho, bohemian kind of vibe. Um, so yeah, I bought that thread for that. And I also purchased it in, I don't know if you can see, it's like a gold, like a gold color. So these are great. I used to use the embroidery floss um, for the earrings. But after a while, it gets dirty. You really can't wash it because I glue the earring to the hoop when I'm crocheting. And it just, the embroidery floss doesn't hold up the same. The nylon um, threads, they just hold up better. Like you can wash them and everything. They get wet. They don't fuzz up and stuff. Also, I have some so allergy buttons. Um, like I said, I'm going to be adding tutus to my shop and I just thought these were just like the cutest little things to put in the bow of the, butt, of the, um, the bow of the tutu. If the theme, like the shirt matches the butterfly and then you have the tutu to match the theme, I thought these were cute. Um, and she has these as well. Oh, sorry about this light, guys. These are like cupcakes. And I just thought they were just adorable little cupcake buttons. And these I did purchase from Hobby Lobby. So these were Hobby Lobby and the thread was Hobby Lobby. Um, I also purchased these little buttons. Oh, you can see them. There you go. I have a um, idea for like, not Elsa, but like Frost Ice Princess type of uh, tutu. And I thought this... Or the hair bow. I thought this would be just so cute in the center of the tutu or the hair bow. I do want to do hair bows as well. So I'm trying to like offer a tutu with a shirt and a hair bow to match, you know, like a set. Um, what else do I have? Oh, I bought these little eyes from uh, Joann's. Uh, in my last video, I did a pattern haul and I was talking about the embroidered bunnies that everybody doing they embroidered the bunny's tummy or the the ear so in the pattern i figured i could make my own bunny rabbit and embroider on it and sell those myself so these were the eyes to go into the i think they call safety eyes yeah so they're called safety eyes so the child can't pull you know the eye out you want to be really careful with the things that you sell for kids and give the kids um, there is a compliance that you need to be with vinyl, um, rhinestones, um, sequins, like anything that you put on like a kid's shirt or kid's clothes that you make. Um, it has to be like, you know, lead free. So there is a compliance. There are a lot of Facebook groups that like teach you about that. Um, I don't really do like kids clothes, but even doing the shirts, if I put rhinestones or jewels or even a vinyl I use, it has, I, I think it's like CI. CIPA or it, it begins with C, but there's a compliance for stuff that you make for children. All the vinyl that I do purchase, which I purchase most from my punk broidery, if you look, they have the license on there and they, they are compliant. So as long as the is stated compliant um, from that company, you know, it's okay, you know, that you can use. And I think the company can even give you a copy of their license if you need it. But I just try to buy from companies, jewels, rhinestones, because um, I do uh, press on nails too, even though I know those are not for kids. But I just try to be safe and buy compliant, safe stuff um, for children. You know, like I said, I, I wasn't blessed to have a girl. I have two boys, you know, so that really wasn't a factor. <laughs> but I see a lot of the girl stuff um, that's out there. You know, they have it. But even with stuff with kids, I try not to put rhinestones and jewels on that type of stuff. I don't want anything a baby or a child can pick off and eventually, you know, put in their mouth. So even when I use the um, heat press vinyl for my items, and I'll show one of those later, um, I it's stitched down. It can't take it off. It can't pop it off. So with the safety eyes for the bunny rabbit, um, I'm glad that they're safety eyes, but I'm going to make sure these things are like super, super secure. You know, because I don't want anybody coming to me saying my child put nothing in their mouth. I'm, oof, I, I, I'll be heartbroken. Um, so moving on, I went off tangent. Sorry. <laughs> so I actually have um, from Hobby Lobby this. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's like a iridescent. Uh, what was it? 
snake skin vinyl. I'm oh, sorry about this lighting. Uh, but it's a faux snake skin wide ribbon. So it's a ribbon. Now, I tried to embroider on this with a green one. It did not work for me. It looks like vinyl. It feels like vinyl. But I'm going to stick with my punk embroidery or the other places I get vinyls for that are for sewing. Um, I can use this for like hair bows. So I purchased that for hair bows mostly. Um, and this is another one. It was like gold. And it's really pretty. But these are little boutique ones you can get from Hobby Lobby. And they're 24 inches by 8 inches. And this one is light gold. I also have. Let's see. So I have two, two ideas. So this was one. Um, I don't know if you can see them. But it's like lavender. But you see how this one has like, it's like a glitter lace. So I was thinking of like the idea for like a, a what they call those, a, I can't think today guys, the double layer, double ribbon tutu, I guess that's what they call it, because I know most tutus have a single ribbon, but it's two layers, so I thought these would be really cute, or even this with like another like uh, silver would be pretty, so and lavender and purple is like my favorite colors. Um, so I put those from Hobby Lobby, and I always catch when Hobby Lobby has to sell when their um, ribbon is half off. And I do get my ribbons from other places like BB Crafts, um, Ribbon Retreat. Um, it's a whole list. So if anybody wants the links, I can link down the places that I purchased my ribbon from, especially when I start doing the tutu videos. Um, this is another one that I purchased. It's pink glitter. And I purchased that from Hobby Lobby. And I have this one. And I have the... Um, I bought the wild one embroidery design and I have the flock animal print um, material and I thought this would be so because it's an applique and I thought it was so cute to embroider the wild one wear and then put this as a tutu and I have the glitter black ribbon um, that can go with this tutu as well. So that's, that's from Hobby Lobby and from my job. Oh no, from Joanne's also, you see. I have felt. So I have blue felt, and I have a brown felt, which is black, and then I have black. So you can see the difference right there. Um, I have these because I will be doing patches. I used to make patches um, for embroidery. So this is what a patch looks like. So basically I embroidered this. Now when I did this, I didn't do this on felt. I just embroidered this on... I think this was cork, a piece of cork, and I didn't like how it turned out, so I cut it out. Um, but you just, you embroider on the felt, and then you can cut it out. You can cut this out with a hot iron, and I used a lighter for this. But then you put heat and bond on the back, and you got yourself a patch. So this is one of the patches, so if you're interested in any patches, um, you can email me. I am treasure at gmail.com. Um, I'm on Instagram. As a Tears Treasure, I'm on Facebook as a Tears Treasure. Um, so you can find me, reach out to me if you want to patch. I definitely will be doing some more of these. Um, so I bought the flannel for the felt for the patches. Um, what else? I actually, oh yeah. I make, I sew um, handbags as well. So I purchased from, um, I think her name is Christine Castell. Uh, she's on YouTube and she has a uh, she's on a lot of Facebook groups but she sells this uh, soul food and it's wonderful oh my god I love it um, it's like if you use SF 101 in your bags and you use um, woven fuse too it's like the two of them had a baby <laughs> and the, so funny it's so weird <laughs> But yeah, um, this is called so few. So I wear like four yards, and it's so reasonably priced. Cause I we use Decoville light a lot in our bag making, and this stuff is expensive. So sometimes you're doing a lighter bag, you don't need the stiffness of Decoville light, uh, Decoville heavy. You know, this I'm telling you, it's like all of them had a baby, guys. Oh, I had a baby. <laughs> so I love that. <laughs> oh my god, just so weird. <laughs> so <laughs> Um, also, I purchased a June Taylor. I really don't care for these. Let me just say that. 
they're not my favorite thing but if you look behind me i have a gold pegboard back there um i bought a bigger piece of pegboard from home depot i'm gonna rebuy them and my husband he spray paints them for me so right now i have a one baby pink that he spray paint spray painted for me i'm waiting for it to dry so i'm going to take this one right here and take this down because it's a small and he's going to put the big one up that's pink on his back wall and that way i'm going to you can see the thread rack that's behind me um this is going to go either side by side or underneath that one and i have a ton of serger thread that i basically keep in this bin right here and it needs to come out of yours it needs to be up and my idea was to actually take a piece of tool and you know how they have the uh, beds um, that have like the little canopy beds where it's like all romantic and you can pull the thing back. I was thinking about doing that with my thread, which is <laughs> weird thing ever. But I was thinking about taking the um, a piece of tool and like ribbon and placing it over the thread because like right now the threads, they get dusty. So I figured, you know, I just make a pretty beer room type canopy for my threads you know they could be all romantic together and not getting dusty that's my idea so yeah that's going to happen so as soon as that paint dry he's going to take this one down and this one is going to go on the wall that's in front of me um and now i can hang my rulers my quilting rulers and things on there as well so that's for that and then i purchased a from amazon 13 by 13 and a half by 17 one percent wool ironing mat these things are nice and this thing is thick so you don't have to worry about steam like you know if you iron on your table and some you know steam gets on your table you only had to worry about the oh uh, this thing is nice because i purchased a little mini fold up iron from walmart and eventually the fabric came off the batting came off and it's cumbersome because you had to constantly fold it get it out your way it is nice but i always end up running into my family room and using a big ironing board and i need something in my room too when i'm ironing i do quilting as well so sometimes you need to you know stitch a seam press the seam right next to you so i purchased this off of amazon so that was an amazon deal um uh also um, I do t-shirts, so I do the Cricut and t-shirts. Now, I eventually want to buy a silhouette machine. Um, I like Cricut. I have the Cricut Maker, but I, that design space, you you suck. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so, yeah, design space goes down a lot, and they have to group someone, as all people complain about. It ain't the Cricut Maker. The Maker is just cutting the stuff. It's trying to get your designs to get to the maker so everybody swears by silhouette and i then um i watch andrina's creations and she has the nicest things andrina let me just give some shout outs right now andrina's creations she really got me really want to use my cricket more because they purchased it for me on mother's day maybe a year ago and i was like eh, yeah it was okay um andrina's creations but she uses silhouette but she kind of showed you how you can do some things on cricket but that's what makes me want to buy this silhouette and um the other lady i do dream i think is do dream on oh she has some really nice videos as well um craftable things patrice uh she has i watch her a lot um i watch so many people angelina Angel, uh, angelina jasmina um uh aqua blue boutique i'm gonna do an unboxing i actually won on a youtube live i won a brother serger um the serger i have behind me is a singer pro finish but she's seen her last days um so i actually won and i thought it was so beautiful her and zao if you're watching this video love you love you love you because you did not have to do a giveaway she actually did a giveaway um and a couple other little young ladies that i watched they all participated and you know donating things another young lady i won uh, fabric from her i just i'm gonna shout out her too and i remember what her name was um but yeah i won the brother uh 1034d serger and um that was a beautiful giveaway so i'm going to do a video of an unboxing for that for that's aqua bloom boutique um she is so sweet and she does lives all the time so she kind of got me on my comfort zone as well to start doing lives not just show my hands <laughs> but just show my face um so i'm gonna be bringing you guys a lot more videos and get up got my comfort zone um 
it took forever for me to start my video just to say hi. Um, but I'm getting out of my comfort zone with that. Um, so keep moving on. So like I said, I do t-shirts as well with the Cricut. Um, eventually going to be the silhouette. So I actually purchased, um, this is the t-shirt marker. or Well, it comes like all your different styles. So it's, um, I think, a delt and youth in here. And it has, you know, the center placement. And it came with this little, I don't know what they call you. Are they like crayons? I think you like you just unscroll that to sharpen the thing and it had like a little uh, measuring tape but yeah it's a like a t-shirt placement bar but it has like different sizes but I'm gonna keep them here because if I don't I'm gonna lose them because they're, they're still they're a little flexible um, rollers so this was an Amazon purchase too and if you want I'll try to leave the link to this um, Amazon deal um, from my job I have um, that you see behind me, I have a Viking um, Ruby Deluxe, and right now, between that and their singer, either one of them I'll use this, so tutus, but I make uh, reading pillows as well, and I'm going to be doing some adult embroidered pillows, and I don't like the zipper foot that comes with a lot of the sewing machines, that wide zipper foot where it's like it's two, and you have to move the zipper, I don't like that. So my job, we have the narrow zipper foot and you can like it's real narrow so you can get really close to stuff I don't know if you can see that so I purchased a narrow zipper foot from my Viking machine and I actually purchased a oh sorry about this light guys I purchased a um, clear invisible zipper foot for the adult pillows my kid pillows I do the envelope style back fold in put the insert in parent can take it off wash it the adult style pillows have an invisible zipper or just a zipper um you can take it out and still insert inside so um they were really popular um this past couple months of me doing pillows um yeah <laughs> also on my job i have a couple new threads i buy embroidery threads from everybody anybody um when i first started i started with a brother um, not that one everybody talk about now. I know everybody talks about the Brother PE, I think 800 maybe machine. But when I started embroidery back in 2000, something, something, <laughs> um, beginning of 2000s, I'm saying when I started, it was like the, it was like an SE or HE machine. It was all for like HSN or QVC and it was like the 4x4 four four embroidery machine. And I had two of them. One had a cassette. You would take the thread and you would, psh, you would slam it into the cassette. And it would thread the needle. I didn't really care for that one because you could only use one style size of embroidery thread. And I don't I don't advise when people always say, oh, what kind of embroidery machine should you get? Everyone always say, oh, get the Brother P, whatever, whatever one it is. And I have nothing against Brother. They're okay machines. Um, but that 4x4, four four, you grow you don't want that it, it you're going to be bored for like that after a while unless you're doing patches like something like this which is a patch this could be doing done on a four by four i think it would have to be smaller than this because you don't really truly get four by four you're getting like 3.28 by something you know so um yeah I, I I grew out of that really fast and even now i'm i've grown out of my single needle but this is my ruby I love her. I've had her since 2013. Never had an issue with her. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, but I need a multi-needle now. And I see everybody's buying the multi-needles. And I also need an industrial sewing machine. If I knew I really was going to get in the handbags the way that I am really am now, I would have purchased an industrial sewing machine years and years ago when it wasn't even really that popular. Now there's, everybody has a walking foot industrial sewing machine. Um, but that's in the future. The singer I purchased is to have a backup um, machine. Like I say, I get them everything half off. So it was a good price for me. Um, this one's nice. This one is the HD, I think, 6380M. I can get through eight layers of vinyl with that. And if y'all would like to see a video on that, because a lot of people, I know everybody wants the industrial, and it's hard to sew through a lot of layers of vinyl with an industrial, I mean, without having an industrial machine. But I was able to punch through eight layers 
uh, vinyl on that machine. I was shocked, you know, six, but eight, yeah, I was able to get through eight. Um, but I use a high speed um, sewing needle that uh, Kelly Rowe, if you watch her uh, videos, she suggested a high speed sewing needle. So that thing, oh, it powered through there and it was a 16 needle. Um, so yeah, so these are like some of the things I do make. So this is like this bag. I made this bag on that singer. I did the embroidery on my Viking and I constructed this bag. Zipper, number five zippers. I get my zippers from um, My Handmade Space off of Etsy, Zip It off of Etsy, um, Amazon sometimes, and Lauren Mormino from Mormino. I love her stuff. I love her videos. She got me back into the handbag uh, making. Um, so this is just a little, and then I put this little, um, if you can see, my little tag that says a tears treasure um, off of Etsy. Um, I'll link, I'll have that link because I can't remember the name of her shop. Um, but these little acrylic tags and I just sew it on. Um, so yeah, so I'll make these little bags, um, little wristlets and stuff. Um, so for my job, also I picked up some thread, extra thread colors. If you look behind me, this bin and this bin. I have my rotary threads I keep in there. And like I said, my surgery thread is in there, but I want to take that surgery thread out and put it um, on the wall. But I have this color is mango. Can y'all see it? It's like an orange color. It's so pretty. And I have wildfire. It's really pretty. It's like a lipstick kind of red really nice and I purchased hot peony and that's pretty and I purchased this color is pro pro imperial this is Robinson Anton threads too and I purchased aqua pearl and I thought that color was really really pretty so all these are Robinson anti-rayon. So I use rayon thread as well as polyester thread. I am going to purchase some threads from All Stitch um, Dinette. They have the Madeira threads. The Madeira threads are really good as well, but half off. <laughs> so I go where the budget fits me. I mean, some things I do buy, you know, that are more high priced because I know the quality. But there are some things you can get that are not the best. Um, that's not, you know, they're not expensive, but they are good quality. You just have to try them out. And my machine can handle just about any embroidered thread. I know some people say, oh, I can't use Coast and Clark thread or I can't use Guterman thread now. Mm -hmm. I would say my Viking does not, it does not that it doesn't like Coast and Clark thread, but Coast and Clark thread shed, has a lot of length. So I have to clean my machine more if I use Coats and Clark than I use Guterman. So most time if I'm doing clothes, I will use Guterman thread. Most of the threads behind me are Guterman, but I do buy Coats and Clark if it's a color that I need. But when I'm doing embroidery, I use Madeira, Robinson Anton, Polly. Uh, I have bro brother Polly Star that I've had probably for over 10 years. And mostly everything on this patch and my bags are either between that brother thread or my Robinson Anton threads, um, Floriani threads I would like to buy maybe one day, but I know All Stitch has Madeira threads for like two under three dollars I think for this this size. Um, I know people have the multi needles; they have the bigger cones. I don't really, I'm not there yet. Like I said, I still need a multi needle, but right now the smaller ones these last me a long time, and I do a lot of embroidery. And I mean, I have some of these threads. Even a brother, like I said, I had them for 10 years and I still didn't even hit pan on any of them. Um, so that is basically everything I have. I thank you so much for taking the time to look at this video. It's kind of long. <laughs> um, I have some other notions as well, but it, too much for me to run around try to find everything. But if you're interested in anything that I have behind me that you see and you want to know where I purchased it, I, you know, send me an email, leave a comment. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I will be bringing you more videos. Oh, I know I wanted to show you guys. It was the embroidery blanks that I'm working on to go back on Etsy. Um, so give me one second. Here's some. 
this one. Okay. I think this is all. So what I do, I purchase um, white interlock fabric from Joann's. So when you're doing your samples, you don't want to waste your t-shirts. Like I have t-shirts. So let me show you some of these. Like, okay, I get most of my t-shirts from, I don't know if you can see it, AJ Blinks. So if you ever don't know who AJ Blinks is, that's Angela Jasmina. Um, she is on YouTube. She got me really into wanting to embroider. <laughs> like, this shirt, like, I was dead embroidery. Like I said, I mostly embroider on vinyl because I embroider the bags. Um, so I really wasn't into embroidering on fabric. And I know that sounds weird. Most people embroider fabric and they're scared to do vinyl. I started embroidering on vinyl. So I'm used to embroidering on vinyl. I have my stabilizers down that I use, the needles to use. Like, I'm the vinyl expert when embroidering vinyl. I wasn't so with shirts and like woven fabrics and knit fabrics that's not really my thing but after watching Angela Jasmina oh I said oh I have to get these shirts now so she sells blanks she has another website that's her website AJ blanks and then she has another one and the kids custom designs um she used to sell the ribbon for the tool tutus I don't know if she's still selling it or she's going back to it because she Recently, in another video, she actually um, purchased an industrial to get back into making tutus because I think she had a machine kind of like mine, and it's slow, you know, when it comes to making tutus. Um, but so she might actually start selling the ribbon again or keep it in her shop and not take it out. I'm not sure. So she has Etsy, Kids Custom Designs, and AJ Blanks. So most of my shirt blanks come from AJ Blanks or Hobby Lobby, um, and some joins now. Joins is actually now selling toddler size shirts they have 2t 3t and 4t they don't go to five but um they used to just have youth and adult but recently joanne's now are selling toddler shirts um and they're thick and they're good quality so check out joanne's if hobby lobby like my unisex ones i usually get from hobby lobby because they don't have a puff sleeve aj blanks um aj blanks and ar blanks so i get most of mine from aj blanks and ar blanks the puff sleeve ones for girls the unisex gray white pink hobby lobby and like I say now joann's um has toddler shirts so check them out i think it's like three dollars and 39 cent ac uh nice even more um hobby lobby and joann's um but good prices and i and i do buy some from aliexpress and alibaba if that is something that you want to get into and you want to start you know have your own shirts if you buy a certain quantity they will put a tag on if you have your own label they will put a tag on it and everything um but you have to buy a lot i'm not i'm not there yet you know um i do eventually want to start selling supplies um i used to sell uh, jewelry so i do have a lot of beads and things and that's a whole nother craft um but i'm gonna get into that too um just be a supplier as well as a maker you know because some things it's just it's faster to sell it than to make it you know um so these are some of the blanks that i did well some i'm gonna redo because they got messed up like say i'm not the best with sewing on clothes so this is trial and error to me um i didn't have any tearaway stabilizer the first time i had to go purchase some and uh, didn't have a ballpoint needle i think i use a regular needle so i had to go pop ballpoint needles as well so this was the first one and right here which i was so upset it was kind of perfect and it got a little hole in the shirt in the fabric this thing this was a knit a white knit interlock knit i think from joann's because like i said you don't want to use the shirts when you're just doing samples because now you're out of shirts and this is my middle name yasmin Unless there's another girl out there named Yasmin, if I make it on a shirt, I mean, that's taking a chance that somebody out there has the name Yasmin for their daughter to buy a shirt. So you do samples. But I just thought this was so cute. So it was a two, the donut fabric, and then a donut. And this is what I was talking about with the compliance for children. Um, this is from our punk embroidery, and this vinyl is um, children's compliant. So like I said, it's on their website. They, all their vinyls are compliant. So this is safe for the child and everything else is just you no know, thread so I thought that was adorable so I'm going to redo this one um, hopefully I don't have a hole in the shirt I just didn't even see it this one I did on a gray blank 
don't know if you can see it. So that's my son's name, Christian. And this is a little one. This one came out cute. And I did this one on gray. Um, this font is called Kitty Tech because my son is always on the computer. I just thought it was so cute. And this is a back to school design. So you can make the crayons, whatever color you want to make the crayons and everything. And I did this one on gray because, you know, most boys shirts, they don't always, you know, you don't buy your child white for boys all the time. My kids would destroy white. So this can be done on gray, white, or black. And since it's for a boy, I figured I'll do the sample on gray. Um, this is another one I did for back to school. And I just put the name Elijah on it. And I thought it was cute. Only thing this one got messed up on the black. I don't know. It's like some little white dots. It's like almost glue. And then the A in the name was messed up. So I'm going to redo this one as well. Because the thing is you want to take good pictures for your samples. And I feel like you will see it. So I'm going to redo that one. This is the only one I feel like came out really good. Oh, and this one is so cute. And I just looked up like popular names for 2020, 2021. Everly was like a good name. I thought it was a cute name. That's not the name I would have. I name a girl. Her name would be Zoe if I ever have another child. Um, but I will plaster everything with Zoe, Zoe, Zoe. So my machine name is Zoe. Um, so I just found another name. But this one is so cute. And again, I use my punk embroidery vinyls. Look at this vinyl. It's so cute. This one is the glitter vinyl they sell. And these are just like iridescent vinyls. And I just thought, so I love the applique. Um, and this uh, font was called Ed, Ed Wise. So I get a lot of my fonts and my designs from Etsy. Um, I just thought that was so cute. Um, so yeah, so these are my samples. I'm going to spend the rest of my day making more samples, redoing these samples, maybe changing the font on some of them. So I do use heat and bond on the back of my materials and then you know you press it. Now some people before the satin stitch they press the fabric down before this last final satin stitch to adhere the heat and bond to the fabric. I usually wait and do that and I'll just take it to my heat press and I'll fuse it. You know I'll use a Teflon sheet over and fuse it. So, thank you so much. This is all that I have. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Like I said, if you can like, comment, and subscribe, just comment what do you think was, you know, a notion that you see that you need. Um, like I said, I will try to put the Amazon links, or if not, I'll tell you, you know, where I purchased it from, how much it costs, and everything. So, thank you guys for watching me. Um, like I said, I'm getting out of my comfort zone to make these videos. This is my second video showing me. <laughs> and, um, Oh, it's just so weird when people want to see you instead of your hands. Like, why can't my hands be enough, people? Um, like, I could be a hand model, you know? <laughs> but, um, so thank you so much for uh, joining me today and watching my video. Like I say, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and I just I appreciate you guys. You know, love you. Like I said, God bless. Remember that God loves you, and so do I.